In this exercise we're going to create a pillbox just like this one, which is to be 3D printed during the introduction to slicing and 3D printing. It consists of a base and a lid that are connected by a thread, so you can screw on the lid and unscrew it uh, as you wish. So, I'll try to introduce some new operations in this one. It can be drawn in many ways, but in order to show you some additional features of uh, Fusion, I'll use a revolve and an offset and a circular pattern. But uh, we will uh, look into that in just a moment. So, let's begin in uh, Fusion. Again, I've set it up uh, with a blank um, project. So, first off, we'll create a component called Base. And construct a um, sketch. This one will not be in the XY plane. I'll do this one in the uh, ZX plane here, because I want to new introduce you to a new feature called Revolve, which is also very useful. So, why right now we are drawing a cross section of the uh, geometry? We'll use a rectangle. I'll set the bottom corner in the origin, and then I'll create a rectangle 30 by 40 millimeters. Um, I would like a rounded edge in the bottom, so I'll do a fillet on this corner with the 10 millimeter radius. Next up, we'll offset these three lines using O. I've deselected the chain selection, so I can manually click these three lines. And I'll set it to an offset of 3 millimeters. So that's the base thickness. Um, we'll do a thread connection, so I need a little bit more geometry. 3 millimeters is not quite enough. So I'll hit L for line and create a right, uh, vertical sorry, line. 4 millimeters. I use the D tool to set a 4 millimeter distance between these two. And finally, uh, the thread should be 10 millimeters in height, so I'll just create another line. Another line going from uh, this to this, and use the D tool to set the height to 10 millimeters. So that's my basic geometry. I'll hit finish sketch. And now I'll do the revolve. Is this uh, icon here? Then I'll just check the profiles I want to revolve, and it's these two. Not that one, not that one. Those are just, uh, uh, yeah, empty space. So I'll next select the axis, and I'll do this line over here. It'll go around 360 degrees. I could choose whatever I'd like there, but in this case I want a perfectly round um, base. So. That's almost it. Now we just need to the to create the thread. So create thread and hit the surface you want to have a thread. By default, this will just be a purely visual thing, so you can do ray tracing and all that. But actually, we wanted model, so I want a real thread. It defaults to a rather coarse thread, as you can see here. So I'll choose a uh, four millimeter thread instead, so a little finer. And then just hit OK, and that's basically the base. So, next up, we'll create the lid. Again, maybe just save it at this point. So, create a new component called lid. Hit OK, and then I'll create it on this top surface. So, hit sketch, click on the top surface, and now really want a uh, an outline that matches the bottom. So, I'll hit P for project, and the outer uh, geometry, and hit OK, and just hit finish. Now I can hide the base, so I want to get this geometry, and then hit extrude, and now I want the entirety to be extruded by, I believe, 15 millimeters. Yep. So now I've got a disc 15 millimeters in height. Um, then we'll need to do the shell with a 2.5 thickness. So again, the base is located down here. 
So I'll go into the bottom, do the shell command from the bottom and set it to 2.5 in thickness. So that's basically the height of my um, my lid. Okay, so now we need the thread on the inside in order to screw on the uh, the lid. So again, hit create thread, hit the inside of the geometry and again select the uh, 75 by 4 and again it should be modeled. So hit OK and now we've got the uh, the lid with a uh, threaded uh, part. Next up we want to have a fillet on the top so it looks nicer. So hit F for fillet, hit the top one and select a 5mm radius. So nice and smooth. Next up we will try to do a sort of pattern on the edge so it looks nicer and has more uh, friction so we can grip it easily. Um, to do this we'll create a geometry where we insert a circular cut on the rim of the, um, of the lid and do a couple of fillets so it's nice and round and smooth. Then I'll just do a single extrusion and then I'll use a circular pattern to get this one to be repeated 40 times all the way around. So create a sketch on the top of the lid, hit C for circle, do an 80 millimeter in diameter circle, do a line hitting L and construction from the center onto the edge of the uh, circle you just generated, hit C to generate another circle, deselect the construction and at this point create a three millimeter circle. Zoom into the area. Next up I would like to have rounded edges on the uh, borders but I can't do that right now because I can't create a fillet because there's not a single point. So I need to trim it. So if you hit this tool or T then you can just uh, hold down the left mouse button and whatever you touch die. So I'll touch that one, touch that one and touch that one. I did not touch that one because I want to keep that. The reason why I did this is that now I can actually uh, create a fillet on this point and on this point and set it to 2mm so we get nice rounded edges. What I actually want to extrude in just a moment is actually this area but unfortunately because I deleted the two lines before uh, I can't select that one. I can select all the other areas but not this one. So to gain access to that one again I need a solid line going through here. Fortunately we've all already got that line so just hit P to project this underlying line into my plane and now I've got this area which is actually the one I want to extrude. So hit finish, zoom out a bit and I'll rotate around. So this is the area we want to extrude so hit E, click the area, set it to, uh, to object, rotate around to the bottom and select this surface. Sorry I did not select the right surface this surface. So now we've got an extrusion going all the way through, hit OK and we've got a cut out. But I wanted it all the way around. So for that purpose we can create a pattern, a circular pattern. Um, it's set to features, yours might be set to bodies but remember to select the features and just hit the feature we just created. Next up we'll need an axis and you can just select the C axis. Then select 40 to replicate the pattern 40, way, uh, 40 times all the way around. Hit OK. And you will have a nice appearance. Finally, I would like some text on top and you can do whatever you like. You can also insert an image if you like that. So I'll just hit sketch the top surface and hit the create text tool and I'll go onto the rim of the inner circle and likewise up here. And in this case I would just like the AU logo so I'll set it to AU Pito as the font size and I'll select 30 millimeters in height that's a nice uh, size for, for that font. Um, and I've set it to center in both so I'll just hit OK. 
that's actually what I wanted. Next up, I'll extrude E the text only um, to minus one. Um, this creates an indentation in the lid. Um, when you're 3D printed, this will be a hole. This one will be flipped around, so this will be the bottom surface. And then it has to bridge it. It should not actually be a problem, but if you want to help the printer just a little bit, you can do a taper angle of minus 45 degrees. If you hit OK, you can see that this generates sort of inward facing surfaces. So the final um, surface that actually has to be printed in the air, so it has to bridge these sections. It's just a little bit easier because they are not quite as big as they were before. That's why you can do a taper. So now if I just reselect the base, you can actually see that we have an entire geometry. And if you go into the top level, you can see both of them at once. But I would like some visualization and I'd like to ensure that the threads I've created are indeed uh, okay. So. First off, let's do the appearance, so hit A, and we can do the um, material, and I've set this one to uh, plastic, and in the translucent section here, there are some uh, different options, so I'll do a red lid, and a white base. So. That's just for appearance purposes. It looks nice. When you 3D print it, you can, of course, choose whatever colors you like inside the printer lab. Next up, let's check if the threads actually match. In order to do that, I'd like some joints so we can actually move things around. So, I'll go into the joint section. First off, we need to lock the base. So we need a uh, rigid type of a joint which should be the bottom of the uh, base, which should be at the origin. It was actually also constructed there, but now it's locked in place. I can't move it around. Next up, let's create a uh, link between the, uh, the lid and the, uh, and the base. So hit the joint again. And this time we will do a revolute, so you can turn the lid around. We can't actually move it up and down, but just turn it around, corresponding to the screwing on motion. So a revolute, and I'll do this circle and this circle. And now I just need to move it uh, into space vertically, so I'll just hit front. And you can see in this case 25 millimeters was the uh, perfect size. So hit OK, and now it's locked in place, but I can actually um, turn this one, which is what I wanted, because next up I would like to visualize that the threads are indeed correct. So using the inspect tool, you can do uh, inspect and a section analysis. And if you choose a plane in this tool, it'll cut the geometry in half using that plane. So hit OK. And if you go to the side, then you can view it from the back and you can see, oh, oh, these threads do not seem to match. But as a matter of fact, if I turn the lid, of course, these threads are, um, are going round. So if you just turn it around, actually, I think I might have offset the geometry uh, wrongly uh, earlier. So I think this one actually moves down into, no, it doesn't. Okay, it's good. So if you turn around, you'll see that we can actually get it to match the geometry with a little bit of uh, distance in between. And that's rather important when you 3D print stuff. Um, the 3D printer does its best to uh, do correct and um, valid printing, but there will be a slight deviation from what you want to have three printed. So you always need a little bit of tolerance between parts. So that's perfect that this is indeed present in this geometry. If you get tired of uh, viewing the half model, you can just 
deselect the analysis and you'll get the full model. But, but in this way, you can actually verify that stuff matches before you actually go into 3D printing it. So next, we'll need to save it to be 3D printed. So if you right click a component, you can choose this save as mesh option. This defaults to STL, 3MF is also a perfectly fine format, but I'll just select STL binary. Um, there's a refinement set to high here. If you preview the mesh, you'll see that the uh, geometry is actually constructed using triangles of a certain size. So if you have a circular appearance like we have here, and you export it using triangles, of course there will be sort of a point-by-point -point, uh, representation of the geometry. If you set this one to low, you'll see that the triangles get bigger and you actually get this sort of effect where you can see that this is planar surfaces stitched together. So if you want to avoid that, just set it to high and then you have a nice smooth outline. It's still actually faceted, but you can't appreciate that one. If you want, you can hit this 3D print utility. And if you select the correct path here, uh, I've set mine to Prusa Slicer, then you can actually uh, just hit OK and it'll automatically send this one to the uh, Prusa slicer to be sliced, which you'll do in the uh, 3D print part of the course. I'll deselect this one and just save it as a file in this instance. So hit OK, choose somewhere to save it, and you'll get an SDL file corresponding to the base. Likewise, right click the lid, save as mesh, hit OK. Save it somewhere. And now I've got two STL files ready for 3D printing.